Well, hello again folks, and I hope you're still all in good health and spirits after the holidays. I'm back out after the hood at crows again this morning, but I've forgotten my head torch, so you're going to have to content yourselves with looking at a dark tree covered horizon while I set out the dead rabbit I have with me for bait and the hooded crow for a decoy. With that done, I retreat it back into the hide to get myself set up. And this time I remembered to use the built in flashlight in my camcorder. The only thing is I soon realised why I don't like using it. As it's that bright it cuts the eyes out of you, making it hard to see anything else in the hide. The rifle is again my CZ 527 Varmint centre fire rifle, chambered in 17 Hornet. Using hand loaded ammunition with a 20 grain VMAX bullet. The scope is a Miopta 4-16 by 44 tactical, which I have a Tacticam 5.0 and FTS unit fitted to it for the scope cam footage. And the suppressor is a Wildcat Panther in 17 calibre. I had to wait a while of course for the sun to rise, but I thought I would speed it up a bit for you to enjoy. Now that it's fully light, I finally see some activity. But the first bird to arrive is actually a raven, closely followed by two hooded crows, which land in a nearby tree. The hooded crows unfortunately are being a little shy this morning, but not the raven as it lands directly beside my decoy. And you can see the sheer size difference between it and my hooded crow decoy. Thankfully though it didn't destroy the decoy, as they quite often do at times. Now ravens can do just as much damage in a lambing field as hooded crows can, but I can't shoot it as they're fully protected under law in the UK. This one however contents itself with lifting a rabbit leg that I'd set out in front of the decoy and flies off with it. I've only ever seen them feeding on the ground, but this one seems quite happy to lift its prize up into one of the nearby trees and peck away contently. Although the hooded crows are in the area, they still seem quite reluctant to land yet. Unlike this magpie who is quite happy to take a wee bit of free rabbit now and again. But I'm going to leave it alone for now, as it's basically acting like a live decoy, and hopefully encourage some of the hooded crows down to the ground. One thing that did strike me as odd was the amount of jackdaws that had gathered up around me and their reaction to my decoy setup. Usually they don't react like this unless there's a dead bird lying on its back and I haven't shot anything yet. They don't really cause any problems with the sheep or lambs so I'm not interested in shooting them. Though if they were coming into a cattle shed now or a field of barley it'd be a different story. Now, I've been sitting quite a while by this stage, and although the hooded crows are in the area, they just will not commit to the ground for a safe shot. But, 
Mr. Magpie has come back and forth quite a few times from the rabbit. And when this hooded crow sees it at the carcass, it's just that last bit of encouragement it needs to finally land where I can shoot it. The bird's about 80 yards away, which I admit is close for a centre fire, but I'm here to shoot them, not give them a sporting chance. Finally, my patience pays off and I get a bird in the bag. I'd only shot that crow about five minutes ago and the magpie was already back at the rabbit. With one crow on the ground, I was sorely tempted to take the shot. But he did help me decoy the first bird down, maybe he'll help decoy a second crow down. So instead I went out and lifted the crow I'd just shot and set it up as a decoy. In hindsight I think I should have shot the magpie, but the hooded crows are why I'm really out here and to get the pair of them would be really good. Unfortunately though, the only thing that came back to the rabbit was the magpie, and he brought a mate. And at one point I really thought I would get them lined up for a double. But they would never stay lined up long enough to take the shot. If the grass had been grazed down a bit shorter, it might have made things a bit easier, but hey ho, what are you going to do hey? You have to work with the conditions you're given. And after a while I realised that that second crow wasn't for coming back, and a single magpie in the bag was better than nothing hey. Ho ho ye boy ye. Now I've hit plenty of magpies in the past but never with that sort of reaction. Ooh, wow. Whoa. Now I think I give it another half an hour or so after that then decided to pack up. Only for guess what? Yes, the second magpie turned up, but instead of getting away with it like I did the last time, the magpie spotted me pushing the barrel of the rifle out through the hide netting and cleared off. <laughs> so at that I decided to call it quits, as I was absolutely foundered that morning. Right, I'll try and be quick at this, because uh, there's a lot of rough weather moving in and it's getting too cold and wet for this carry on. But that's my dead rabbit set up for a bait. I think it might be staying here tonight because it's a wee bit too far gone to be taken back to the bridge. And that was my decoy crow I set out this morning on the uh, little wire decoy stand I make. And uh, I don't know, the crows were a wee bit uh, reluctant to land, but it took a while and this bird landed and I shot it. And set up, quickly set up as a decoy, hoping that the, the other bird would come back, as usually the mate does. But <laughs> I think it's seen this set up before because it turned its back and never came back again. So it definitely knew not to land on the ground. And then uh, there's a magpie landed and I shot it and it is scattered everywhere. There's a bit of it there, a bit of it there. <laughs> Sorry the camera works not terribly great, a bit of it there. So 
you might not see a photograph of it because it's just <laughs> too far gone to do in with. But now anyway, I'm going to get packed up before I get soaked and get home. Man, that little 17 Hornet really scattered that magpie to the four winds. Well folks, for all that happened this morning I'm afraid the bag is a wee bit pitiful. But then again the farmer is always happy at every hood at crow I get. But I might have to change my technique for the next time. But until then, look after yourselves and take care, hey.